So now I believe that our live stream is working, but it wasn't a few moments ago. So I hope that you enjoyed the prelude, but I think the uh, virtual audience, uh, virtual uh, worshipers did not get to see it. So thank you, Brent. No, don't do it again. <laughs> Although I do need to catch my breath a minute. <laughs> it's, it's really great having this system. It's nice that it's up in the back, except when there's a problem and you have to run all the way up to that end of the church. Well, will you all please join with me in our responsive call to worship? Come to worship God whose love was revealed in Jesus. Let all the ends of the earth turn to our God. We will worship the Almighty and sing praises. We will proclaim good news to us. Beloved, we are called to love as God loves us. We are to love one another as sisters and brothers. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. We seek to let God's love be perfected in us. Remember that you have been baptized. God claims you and has high expectations of you. Christ is the body. We are the branches. We will bear fruit and we abide on the body. Let us pray. Open our senses to your direction, amazing God, so we may be alert to opportunities you give us. Fill us with good news to share with those who seek meaning for their lives. We are here because we need the good news ourselves. There is much in life that we do not understand. We seek to know your word and to be led by it. Recall us to the vows of our baptism, reconfirming in us the covenant promises that link us to you and to one another. As we meet you here, our hearts are lifted up in praise. May our worship glorify your name and be pleasing to you. Amen. Sense the love of God that seeks to live in us. Remember the times you have felt connected to the true vine, Jesus Christ. Listen again to the promise and challenge. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Bear much fruit and become my disciples. Let us come before God to abide in Christ and confess our sins. Let us pray together. O oh God, we have ignored our origin in you and denied your rule over the nations. We have pursued illusions of self-interest rather than abiding in your love. We have turned away from brothers and sisters as if they were enemies to be hated. We are afraid to love those who differ from us or who have the power to harm us. We hesitate to take the risks of caring for fear that we may be hurt. Disciples seems too demanding. O oh God, release us from our fears and failures to trust your love and live with bold generosity. Amen. Know that we are blessed and in Christ we are forgiven. Amen. Those who are able may rise and join as we sing our opening hymn.
seated. Well, I see that we do have a couple of uh, young people, uh, and they're all the way in the back. And that's okay. So we're going to do our best to hear each other uh, moving forward here. Okay? So, what do you need to grow a plant? Who can tell me what you need to grow a plant? Go ahead, kids. Shout it out. Seeds. Dirt, water, thank you. We're, we're relaying the message up, okay. Sun. Manure. Man manure, fairy. <laughs> that was one of the big kids participating. <laughs> yes, we need a whole bunch of those things to make a plant grow nicely. Well, in our Bible story this morning, Jesus is talking about a vine, and on that vine grows a good plant. And a part of that, Jesus is also trying to tell us that we are to grow to be good plants. We are to grow in our faith and be good disciples. So to the young people and the young at heart out there, how can we be good disciples? Love your neighbor as yourself. Spread the message. Spread the message. Good. Shout up from the back. Be kind. Be kind. Love others. Feed the sheep. Feed the sheep. Exactly. In some ways, it's very easy to grow and grow our faith and to love others. And that's the main point of the message this morning. That we need to grow like a good plant. We need... We need a good foundation with soil and <clears throat> manure and um, <laughs> seeds and water. And in our faith, if our faith is strong, then we can share God's love with others. So I'm going to ask that all of us here together will bow your heads and repeat after me as we pray together. Let us pray. Life-giving God, Life God, we are grateful. For allowing, us for allowing us to grow our faith, to grow our faith. And, to and to be good disciples. Amen. Amen. verses 25 through 31. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying, that he has done it. The second reading is from Acts verses Acts chapter 8 verses 26 to 40, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, "Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road." So he got up and went. Now, there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. 
He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now, the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I invite you to rise as you are able. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This ends the gospel reading. You may be seated. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. Now I usually struggle with any story or parable that talks about involving uh, branches or trees or gardens because I am not exactly a person who has a green thumb. We have an occasional small garden from time to time, but we have also had corn grow in the backyard in a place that we didn't plant corn. Pretty good trick, huh? I thank the birds for that one that year. Now, although I am not a gardener or a great farmer, 
and I really am bad at telling a weed from a flower. There are parts of this passage from chapter 15 of John that I can really relate to. And when Jesus drew his picture of the vine, he knew what he was talking about. The vine was grown all over Palestine, as it still is. It is a plant which needs a great deal of attention if the best fruit is to be gotten out of it. It is grown commonly on terraces, and it is usually uh, ha needing of the perfect ground in order to grow well. It's also sometimes trained to go up trellises, sometimes allowed to creep over the ground, upheld by low forked sticks. It even grows around the doorways of cottages. But wherever and whenever it grows, the soil, the foundation, needs to be good. So abundant are these seeds that they are set in the ground 12 feet apart because they spread so far and wide. Now a young vine is not allowed to, be, to bear fruit for the first three years and each year is cut drastically back to develop and conserve its life and energy. When mature, it is pruned in December or January. And it bears two kinds of branches, one that bears fruit and one that does not. And the branches that do not bear fruit are drastically pushed back so that they will not take apart any of the plant's good strength. The vine cannot produce the crop of which it is capable without drastic pruning, and, and Jesus knew that. The vines need good soil and good structure to grow healthy, just like a firm foundation is needed to grow our faith. Now, some of the followers of, of Christ are lovely fruit-bearing branches of Jesus. Others may not be as good because they bear no fruit or very little. We can imagine that Jesus is, was projecting here the idea of Christians, maybe, whose Christianity consisted of, of profession without practice, maybe words without deeds. He was thinking of followers who were useless branches and bear new, would bear no fruit at all. He was probably thinking about the followers who, who had heard the message and maybe even loved the message, kept it in their hearts, but then they fell away. They stopped following, and maybe they even stopped believing. But there are also ways that we can be useless branches as we attempt to do our best to follow Christ. We can listen to him and then say that we will do the work of God, but then maybe we don't follow through. Or we could even accept Jesus and his words and his teachings. But then when things get tough, we shy away and maybe even walk away completely. So we come to a passage like this and look at the analogy and try and follow how we might fit as the vine or as the branches or as the fruit, and we can, we can put ourselves into the category of, of one of them. So where do you fit into this analogy? Do you feel that you are at the, at the very top? You are a good fruit bearer, always following Christ, always making the right decisions, always doing what you think is right. Or are you a fruit bearer most of the time? But maybe you fall back into that leaf category and you struggle maybe when your faith gets just a little bit tough. But you know, I think that just by your presence here at worship or if you are worship, worshiping with us virtually or even if you are just making good decisions, praying every once in a while, 
And as long as you can say that you have done everything in your power to show the love of God to every creature, and I mean every creature and every person, then you can be proud of the fruit that your vine is producing as a faithful follower of Christ. And last week I was preaching a sermon on the difference between the good shepherd versus the bad shepherd or the hired hand. The one who will lay down his life for his sheep, but the other one who runs away when things get tough. If you would like to learn more, you can check out that sermon by visiting our YouTube channel or our Facebook page. <laughs> but today we are focusing on how we can be the good vine growers, the good fruit bearers, in order for us to be good fruit and grow good fruit, we must first enrich our lives. We need to have that strong base of faith in order to grow from that strong starting point. We have to, if you will, spread the manure <laughs> to grow our faith. Now, like I said before, as a person who attends uh, a time to lift up praise to God like we are doing this morning with your, your fellow church members, you, you are doing one thing that will help to enrich your spirit. But if, you, if there are people who are not comfortable joining us for in-person worship or those who even aren't attending online, it is, it is okay. Hold on a minute. It's okay because those individuals that maybe aren't attending worship or we're virtually worshiping with us are doing other things that will enliven their spirits. They will brighten their spirits through their own personal prayer, through their own personal time with God, and through continued care for their neighbors. Because, you see, we all have ways of growing our faith, of enriching our souls, of lifting up our spirits, whether we are together, whether we are together virtually or whether we are apart. We all have ways to grow. So that is step one to being a good disciple. Enrich your own spirit first. Be in prayer Praise God. Be thankful. Sing songs and share the good news, however that may look for you. A second step to being a good disciple is not the internal work of enriching your own life, but the enrichment of the lives of your friends and your neighbors. We can bring glory to God through our actions and our prayers, and our mission of spreading the message of the love of God to the rest of the world. You know, we may or may not know the person that's walking down the street and whether they are a fellow believer or not. We may know that our coworker goes to the church down the street, so we don't want to preach to them, but we also know that our actions for loving them no matter what they believe, our actions for loving and caring for the least of these, for, for those on the margins, for those who may not even agree with you, then we can call ourselves good disciples. We are bearing good fruit for the work of God. And we can blossom. And we can spread over the trellises and the gardens of the world as we carry the message of the love of Christ in our hearts. Now one thing about my gardening is that every once in a while, something will take root. And I'll have really good potatoes or tomatoes or a couple of flowers blooming in that pot on the front porch. So remember that 
even though you may have times of struggle and you may not feel yourself growing personally or helping others to grow and bear their good fruit that even the good plants need to be pruned and take a step back every once in a while to be able to grow. My prayer is that you will find yourself filled with the Spirit and that you will live a life that is pleasing to God as you lift up praise and thanksgiving as a wonderful, faithful, fruit-giving plant and good disciple for the continued work of God. May it be so. Amen. Apostles' Creed as found in our bulletin this morning. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. This morning, I want to lift up um, 
the country of Chad, Africa. There has been uh, some awful uh, changes in uh, presidential leadership and uh, there is a lot of political unrest. So we want to lift up those people who are suffering and dealing uh, with that in their country. Also want to lift up uh, the family of Jean Snyder. Uh, she is my aunt who passed away this week uh, from COVID, uh, was my, my mother's sister-in-law. Uh, so I would appreciate prayers for the family of Jean Snyder as well. Let us come before God in a time of prayer. O oh, Holy One, we come to this place of worship together in this holy space outside of our sanctuary. We are thankful for the ability to worship together even though things are still not normal. We ask, O oh God, that you will help us to have patience for the changes to take place and support our brothers and sisters as we continue to deal with the pandemic. Help us to continue to care for each other through the love that you have given, given to us to share with the world. We thank you for bringing us together, for allowing our vines to be good fruit as faithful people, working for you and your creation. We ask that you will be present with those who are in distress, those who are in need of your continued healing power, including Scott Wales and Mary Angie Shell, Joanne McLean and Lewis and Ruth Andis, Megan Quick and John Alderman, Kristen Kemery and Kevin Hefty, John and Linda Bachman and Marianne Blyer, Lori Haupt and Ryder Mechtel, Gwen Lukowski and Geraldine Folk, Jonathan and Fred, Winnie and Karen, Kristen Yates and Bruce Anderson, Brian Fox and Sam Rodanovic, Jim Rowland and Keith Lash, Chris, Bonnie Lighty and Cassandra, Ray and Deborah and Chris, Lucas and Mason, Debbie Hope and Helen Latshaw, Amy Keller, Ann Alderman, the family of Jean Snyder. We continue to lift up the men and women serving around in our armed forces. May they all be kept safe as they serve this wonderful country. And we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world as they deal with political unrest, with their own challenges of the coronavirus pandemic in Chad and in India. We lift up our brothers and sisters to you this day. And we ask that you will hear us now as we join our voices together, praying the prayer that your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
our congregation and our friends and family have continued to bless us with their offerings of both financial giving, but also the, the time and talents to continue the work of the church. Let us offer a blessing, generous gifts. Let us pray. We give gracious God because we are grateful. Your love has sustained us through many trials and temptations. We are thankful for those who have guided our attempts to understand the scriptures. Your loving gifts have allowed us to bear much fruit and spread your love through our financial support and the gifts of our time and talents. We ask that you continue to bless us in our work together. Amen. I ask that you will join me in our communion liturgy as found in our bulletin. Beloved in Christ, the gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus Christ was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, on the same day sat at the table with two disciples, and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Men and women, youth and children, come from the east and the west, from the north and the south, and gather about Christ's table. This table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Holy One, almighty and eternal God, always and everywhere through Jesus Christ, the only one begotten by you before all time, by whom you made the world and all things. We bless you for your continual love and care for every creature. We praise you for forming us in your image, for calling us to be your people. Although we rebelled against your love, you did not abandon us in our sin, but sent to us prophets and apostles to lead us into the way of salvation. Above all, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus, our only Savior, who is the way, the truth, and the life. In the fullness of time, you came to us, received our nature in the person of Jesus, who in obedience to you, by suffering on the cross and being raised from the dead, delivered us from the way of sin and death. We praise you that Jesus now reigns with you in glory and ever lives to pray for us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who leads us into truth, defends us in adversity, and gathers us from every people to unite us in one Holy Church. Amen. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion and on the eve of death, Jesus gathered his disciples for the feast of Passover. And he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he also took the cup and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You may get out your own elements. And I ask that you keep your masks on at this time, and then we will all commune together. And I would like to remind you that you remove your masks ever so briefly to take your communion and then put them back on. Let us be in a spirit of prayer together. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith, recalling Christ's suffering and death, rejoicing in Christ's resurrection, and awaiting Christ's return in victory. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives committed to your service in behalf of all people. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit on this bread and wine, on our gifts, 
and on us. Strengthen your universal church, that it may be the champion of peace and justice in all the world. And restore the earth with your grace, that is able to make all things new. Be present with us as we share this meal and throughout all our lives, that we may know you as the Holy One who, with Christ and the Holy Spirit, lives forever. Amen. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. And the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. These are the gifts of God for all of God's people. All things are now ready. The body of Christ broken for you, take and eat. As you put your things away and put your masks back on, I will invite you to join me for a time of prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence and the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with Christ's body and blood that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. We are called to bear good fruit. Sometimes we need to take a step back only to be able to continue to grow. So may you grow. May you bear good fruit as we all continue the work of God. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. Amen.